Hello and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. Today's video is all about Maurizio Sarri and his Sarri ball trying to implement that into Football Manager. At the moment, he is the manager of Lazio, so we are going to try and look at his tactics so far at Lazio. Again, trying to implement that into Football Manager is very possession based, so we are expecting to see some very nice possession numbers, but also, and most importantly, some very good football being played. If you are new and you are enjoying my type of content make sure you are subscribed like this video you can leave a comment all of that helps the channel grow but also if you enjoy watching free football then you should check this sponsor out one football and the rdf tactics channel have chosen to collab once again downloading this app would help this channel out in many ways but why exactly should you download it? The OneFootball app is an excellent app for football fans. It's the best place to check recent news, legally watch matches, yes, for free, and you can follow your team and be notified when something major happens. It's also great to check out the latest transfer rumours, and if you're like me, you don't want to miss out on any rumours, transfer season can be fun. Once all the league starts up as well, it's a great app to check statistics. This channel creates recreations. Using the OneFootball app helps grab vital stats, but also you will have access to team lineups before the football match starts. This is a great app if you want to follow football around the world or get the latest news just on your team. So make sure you try it out, but it does also help this channel out a lot and gives it many great opportunities to grow. So give it a go and I promise you won't regret it. Sorry, almost always deploys a 4-3-3 formation, so Lazio have seen a change of formation, but also a change of style of play. At Juve, his preferred structure was the 4-3-1-2 because of the personnel, but he did use the 4-3-3 as well as a 4-4-2. Sorry will look to apply his positional play principle to Lazio's game when they are in possession. Deploying the 4-3-3, when his teams are in the build-up phase, Sarri wants his three midfielder players to stagger and position themselves in different areas of the pitch in order to stretch the opponents vertically. This creates gaps in the opponent's high press that can be exploited through neat, tidy and precise passing. In the meantime, the fullbacks and wingers keep their width in the wider areas, stretching horizontally. Again, this ensures that Sarri's side has a lot of space to play into. Due to how stressed the opponent's high press can be because of the staggered positioning of the central midfielders, Lazio may find it easy to progress their way through the first third of the pitch into the middle third with quick passing. Sarri's sides also like to break through the opponent's high block by baiting the high press before playing through it. Napoli, under his management, did this particularly well, using Jorginho due to his ability to play line breaking passes through the first line of the opposition's pressure. The baiting of the press is usually triggered by a backwards pass, which draws the opposition to press the pass higher up the pitch. In the example provided, Lazio's right back has played a backwards pass into the ball near centre back. This has caused the opposing players to press higher as the backward pass is usually a trigger for this. When Lazio have possession of the ball in the middle third in a positional attack, also known as a progression phase, the structure becomes a lot more narrower in the central areas. Sarri is a major advocate of having positional superiority in between the lines. Positional superiority essentially means that the coach wants to have quality players positioned between the opposition's midfield and back line who can receive the ball in space and look to play forward. Here is an example of Alberto and Milinkovic Savic positioning themselves in the half spaces between the lines. Both men have positional superiority in this area and if they are able to create a good angle for a pass, they have the quality to receive the ball on a half turn and drive forward, advancing Lazio further up the pitch. Lucas Lever's role will be very important and interesting to watch under Sarri. The Italian manager tends to play with a single pivot that possesses excellent passing skills and the ability to dictate tempo of the game such as Jorginho at Napoli and Miralem Piaginic at Juventus. Lucas does not quite match the players listed as a typical Sarri number 6 but could potentially thrive under the Italian. Sarri wants his size to play through the opposition in the central areas, meaning that Lucas will be very important in facilitating this. There are two main ways that Sarri wants his size to play through the opposition centrally. Firstly, by using the up, back and through passing pattern. 
The up back through is used by most teams and can be a really efficient pattern of play when the whole team in possession has quality players to execute it. In the example provided, the right centre back has played the ball into the feet of Milinkovic Savic who acts as a wall pass and plays it off to Lucas Lever. The Brazilian then plays a first time pass through the opposition lines into Immobile who has dropped to receive as Sarri wants his centre forwards to do so. The Italian striker is now in a great position to turn and slip in a runner in behind the back line to create a goal scoring opportunity. The second way that Sarri wants his team to break down the opposition centrally is by playing a diagonal ball over the top to forwards who are attacking the depth. Despite wanting his team to keep hold of possession and unlock the opposition's defensive block using nice fluid passing, Sarri is no stranger to playing the ball over the top or through a back line. These diagonal runs are made by one of the front three which begin on the blind side of a defender. Lorenzo Insignia at Napoli and Pedro at Chelsea were particularly good at making these runs under Sarri at their respective clubs. Viewers will see Pedro do quite a lot of this again under Sarri during the season. At times though, the central areas will be too far congested to play through and if Lazio are failing to make any breakthroughs with diagonal balls in behind, they will need to try their luck down the flanks. In situations like this, Sarri instructs his players to create wide overloads in order to try and break down the opponents out wide with numerical superiority. This is done by creating triangles or diamonds on the flanks. The wide triangles are created by the winger, ball net advanced midfielder and fullback on the ball side. However, sometimes the single pivot will shift across and add an extra body to aid them if the team are struggling to break through, which forms more of a diamond. Maurizio Sarri still has a lot of work cut out for him. While the blueprint is very clear to see, Lazio are still quite rough around the edges and will need more minutes on the pitch as well as the training ground to get the team where Sarri wants them to be. But unfortunately, that wraps up this tactical analysis written by Adam Scully from Total Football Analysis so make sure you check it out, the link will be in the description but for now we are going to go into Football Manager to have a look at the tactic that I have recreated, it's called Sarri Ball so let's head over to Football Manager to have a look. So here we are in Football Manager and as you can see on the screen we have Maurizio Sarri replicated 4-3-3 in Football Manager. So what we're going to do we're going to have a look at the player roles, the team instructions and then lastly before ending the video we will look at some stats and of course the results. So let's start with the player roles. In goal we do have the sweeper keeper on the supportive duty. Both fullbacks are the fullbacks on supportive duty who are instructed to shoot less often, get further forward and also stay wider and in defence we have two ball playing defenders. In defensive midfield I was kind of struggling which role to settle with, should it be the deep line playmaker, should it be an anchor man or just a defensive midfielder on the supportive duty which is what I went for. So we do have the defensive midfielder on the supportive duty who's instructed more direct passes trying to break those lines but also to close down more. In central midfield on the left we do have the advanced playmaker someone that's going to operate in between the lines exactly what we want to do. He's instructed to stay wider and then we have a box to box midfielder as his midfield partner who's going to be shooting less often and staying wider. On the flanks, on the left, we do have the winger on the supportive duty, someone who's going to be stretching play but don't get it confused, it doesn't mean that he isn't going to be finding himself in those central areas. He's instructed to take more risk and get further forward, whilst the winger on the right is the inverted winger on the attacking duty, someone that's going to overload that central attacking area and he's instructed to take more risk. Lastly, for that immobile role, we do have the advanced forward now. There's many roles that we could have went with because Sarri does like his strikers to drop deep and receive the ball as well as break the lines but in Football Manager that is very very hard to find. Using a deep line forward you aren't really going to get that play of making the runs in behind effective enough and we could have used a complete forward which I did try but again it just wasn't effective in breaking those lines or getting in behind I should say for Immobile. It does well in dropping deep but Immobile at the end of the day is a natural goal scorer which is what we try to replicate in Football Manager as well. So for the team instructions we are using that balanced instruction, 
This mentality, I feel, makes better use of possession. The attacking width is set to very narrow. In the approach play, we are going to be playing out from the defence, of course, and we do have overlap on the left and overlap on the right to try and get those fullbacks to advance. The passing directness is set to shorter and the tempo is set to extremely high, trying to play football at a speedy tempo. We want short passing, but we do want those passes to be nice, precise and very quick. In the final third, we are going to be working the ball into the box while sending in mixed crosses. For the transition, when the possession has been lost, we will look to counter press and when the possession has been won, we do not have a direct instruction so we aren't going to counter and we're not directly going to hold our shape. When the goalkeeper is in possession of the ball, he will look to roll it out to his central defenders and that is trying to create that three man line between the two central defenders and the goalkeeper. Lastly, for out of possession, we are using the offside trap with a much higher line of engagement, a higher defensive line, the defensive width is set to standard, the marking and tackling we are using tighter marking, more urgent pressing, prevent that short goalkeeper distribution and for better results we are using getting stuck in. You don't have to use get stuck in but you can use it, for me it just provides better results. Also, what you can do when you are playing against the weaker sides or if you feel you need to, you can change the mentality to positive. But when you do, I would suggest setting the tempo maybe to standard or higher and not just leaving it on extremely high. So if you are going to tweak it to positive, make sure you keep an eye on the tempo because it can result in you losing the ball very often. But that there wraps up the tactic, the team instructions, the player roles and all of that good stuff. We are now going to check the results that this produced. So now, let's check the results. So for the competitions, as you can see in the Serie A, we managed to win that. We played 38, we won 28, we drew 7, losing 3, getting a points tally of 91. In the Coppa Italia, we also managed to win that if we click on the trophy. You can see that we beat Napoli in the final one goal to zero. We had 10 shots, they had four. We had an XG of 1.47. And most importantly, the ball possession, we had 56% of the ball. Looking at the table in more detail, we scored 66 goals, which I believe is the second most in the league. And we also conceded 20, which again, I believe is the second least in the Serie A. But we can look at the stats from here, we can see that we had the most points per game which is fairly obvious. We scored the second most with 66, we had the fifth most shots at goal and then we had the second least fewer shots against. For the best pass completion we came in third with 91% but we are joint third and again average possession most important we do top that list with 57% of the ball possession. Most tackles won, we aren't in the top 8 for the most dribbles made, again we aren't in the top 8. For the most clean sheets, we are joint 2nd with 24 and for the fewest conceded, we are joint 2nd with 20. When we do look at the player overalls, Immobile did score 19 goals which makes him the 2nd highest top goal scorer. Giovanni Simeone scored 20, very well done to him. We do have Adam Murisic, I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly and he scored 13 goals. For the most assists, Luis Alberto with 10. For the most shots 4, we don't have anybody in the top 8. For the most man of the match awards, we have Luis Alberto on 6, Chiro Immobile on 5. For the most key passes, Luis Alberto with 103. Best pass completion, well we have 5 players in this list, we have 5 in the top 8, Luis Felipe, Francesco Asherby, Pepe Reina, Patrick, Luis Lever and that's it. <laughs> for the most tackles won, nobody in the top 8, for the most dribbles made, again nobody in the top 8, for the most clean sheets we have Pepe Reina and for the fewest conceded, again Pepe Reina in 4th place. Now looking at the team report, the attacking efficiency, Lazio were very clinical, very clinical and we were also aggressive. Now looking at the defensive efficiency, if I can find it, there we are, the defensive efficiency, we were quiet and impenetrable so we were good going forward and we were good defensively as well. Now lastly, before we end this video, we can see who were the top goal scorers for Lazio, the best performers. We can see that Chiro Omobile scored 27 in all competitions in 42 games. Adam Morisic scored 13 in 27 starts. 
Matias Akangani, he scored six. Luis Felipe scored six. Luis Alberto scored five. So did Asherby and so did Mariki. Now, for the most creative players, we have Luis Alberto on 14. Adam Muzic, who obviously had a decent season, scored seven. Manuel Lazari also has seven assists. I probably just said Mirosic scored seven. I meant to say that he assisted seven. Pedro also got six assists to his name. Now, looking at the best performers, we do have Luis Felipe, who was probably the best performer out of the first team. Stefan Radu as well. We have Manuel Lazari. We have Luis Alberto, Chiro Omobili, obviously, Pepe Reina, and Francesco Asherby. But unfortunately, that wraps up this video big shout out to total football analysis as well and adam scully allowing me to use the tactical analysis for this video my name is rdf i hope you have enjoyed this video don't forget if you have enjoyed it make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment also make sure you download that one footballing app but i will see you soon stay safe peace out and god bless